Hello everyone and welcome to Do Yoga with the Phoenix. It's lovely to have you back if you've come back and if it's your first time, hey, welcome, welcome. Uh, this uh, channel is dedicated to creating happiness, harmony and flexibility in your life. Namaste. <laughs> So absolutely fabulous, and I've done a, done a particular a class for that in the series. We're going to concentrate on the legs in this one, so um, enjoy the experience. Uh, just let go. So you don't really need to know anything terribly much about yin yoga if you've never done it before to enable you to do it, and it's for everybody. Everybody can do yin yoga. Everybody can do yin yoga. So uh, we'll, without further ado, we'll get on with our, the class and uh, those who have done my classes before will know that I start and finish the class with the three on mantra. So we're going to do that now. Uh, bring your hands into Namaskar, taking a nice big deep breath in. Take the hands down onto the knees and just lift up through the spine, just allowing the breath to move easily in and out of the body. Starting to settle down now. And if you're new, there's only really three things that you need to know about yin yoga. The first is that we come to a shape or a posture that suits us, suits our body, suits my body. If I'm doing mine and yours, if you're doing yours. Then we make a commitment or a resolution to stay still. Now that's where the challenging part is because it's yin here as well as here, mind and body. And then the third um, tattva or element of reality that we talk about is time. In yin yoga we spend a great deal more time in the actual postures themselves. There's a number of reasons for this and I will go through these as we go through the class. But let's just get started with the class right away. So um, I've got a bolster and if you don't have a bolster that's fine, uh, you may need one. Um, if you don't then you can use a roll blanket. I'm just going to put my bolster aside right now for the first posture. So the first posture is going to target the inner thigh. And all we're going to do with this posture, or shape if you like, which we often use, don't even use the word shape, uh, posture, I beg your pardon, is we're just going to move ourselves a little bit of yang to get ourselves feeling for it and then once we've found it then we're just going to drop the head down and relax into the posture. Just letting the breath move gently in and out. So we want to find a posture in yin yoga that suits us. What does that mean? Well, it's somewhere that you can feel the energy of the posture working in the, into the fascia of the body. So we want to let go of the muscles, so let go of any muscle tension and allow the energy to transfer into the fascia of the body. That's the area that we're working here. And 
Then once we found, and I've kind of feeling this now, let my head go, because I tend to carry on to stress here in the neck. Let my head go, just allowing myself to open up through this area in the leg, around the inner thigh muscles, and the fascia, of course, surrounding there. Switching off everything. Now, the last thing that we need to think about is time. We're going to hold this posture for a relatively long period of time. And in this class, the holds will be anywhere between two to five minutes. So just allowing ourselves to uh, feel this posture here now. Gently letting the breath settle down. Now as far as stillness is concerned, there's a couple of you, you can see I just moved my feet a little bit there, moved my body a little bit. And that's because my body is about, is allowing me to come deeper into the posture, allowing me a little bit more. And so the caveat is, if, I, if that's happening to me, that's what I want. I want to get deeper in the posture, but I don't want to push and pull it. I just want to let it happen. I want the posture to come to me. And then once I've moved a little bit, got a little bit deeper, then I can allow myself to drop into stillness again. If you find that you're way up here like this, and I'm just demonstrating now, if you're way up here like this, and you're not, and it's kind of, you feel almost as if you're going to fall back, sometimes you can just place a bolster on a block under your, under your butt, and that'll let your head fall through a little bit forward, further forward. You just stay in the posture. I was just demonstrating. So sometimes I should perhaps uh, warn you of these demonstrations that I'll do throughout the, the postures I will do in the future. Uh, I apologize. Good. Taking a few deep breaths now into the body. And just letting go of that. Coming out of the posture. And we're going to take a rebound now in Shavasana. So we're just going to swing our legs around. Drop down into Shavasana. Move that bolster right out of the way and relax. Now I'm actually getting a big rebound through my lower back because my lower back is compromised. I've got subluxation of the lower spine. And uh, this is one of the reasons I started to do yoga in the first place. Bikram yoga was one of my introductions to yoga. It's a bit different from Bikram, right? And those of you that have done it. And so I uh, found that it helped a lot. And uh, I followed through with that. So that was about 10 years ago. And my back is so much better. I'm just allowing no pain. Just settling in. All right, so we're gonna come into the quadriceps now and we're gonna use a posture called saddle. And saddle is actually a really, really challenging posture for me and, and for you it maybe isn't, but uh, I'll demonstrate how I do it. And I can't really demonstrate the full expression of the posture. I apologize for that. You'll just, have to, you'll just have to use your imagination. So um, what we're going to do here is we're just going to sit down and if you can imagine my bum coming all the way down in between the knees. So once, if my bum was on the ground, then I could come back onto my elbows. I can't because it's not available to me. Then if I'm really flexy, I can come back all the way onto my back. So for me, my posture even needs a little bit of a help just like that. So what I have to do with me, because I'm, I have, as I say, a very tight hamstring, uh, quadricep. And that's why this posture is really good for me, but, uh, but it is challenging. So all I have to do is sit like this. Now, a lot of you will be able to come back. You may be able to take a bolster behind your back and lie across the bolster. 
Um, that's an option. Anyway, whatever your posture is, once you've found it then, once again, just come into stillness now. And this is an amazing posture of saddle pose uh, for opening up the knees and the ankles and the hips and stretching through the front side of the leg. As I say, if you can find your way all the way back onto your bolster or even onto the floor. And lots, of, lots of my students just lie with their back on the floor and then they can take their hands up over their head and lie there. And that, when they do that, they're getting a back bend as well. That unfortunately, oh, or fortunately, whatever, we're all different. So it doesn't matter because I am getting this. And the saying is that if you're feeling it, you're doing it. That's it. In yin yoga, if you're feeling it, you're doing it. And I am certainly feeling it. Just letting go. My body's moved a little bit more, so I've got a little bit more now. And uh, I can just maybe even come a little bit deeper, heading towards the bolster, but I think that's probably about it for me. So um, we're going to move directly into our next pose, uh, but first they're just, just taking some movement. And our next pose is quite a challenging one. We're not we're not gonna we're not gonna stay here for very long. And this is our toe stretch. And so what I want you to do is I want you to tuck your toes under like this, and then just sit back on them. See if you can get the pinky toe involved as well. Just move the toes around so that you're sitting back into them. And then breathing in. I'm only going to hold this posture for a minute. And this is really good. Uh, this whole sequence, by the way, if you're a runner, this is, this is amazing for you. If you do a bit of running, that's fine. I used to do math and running a while back, a long time ago. I didn't discover yoga, and that's one of the reasons my back was so. Don't run anymore, but you know, if you do, brilliant, well done, good on you. And this, uh, one of the main areas that we have problems with with running is a plantar fascia, and it's a strip of fascia that runs from the the, uh, the heel down to the toe, uh, and it holds the arch in the in the toe. But uh, you know, this 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 particular. Uh, a stretch really addresses, it gives a little bit of stretch into the fascia, but it's really challenging. I'm, I'm feeling this big time now. I'm working through this. I'm not going to break, it's not going to damage me, and I'm coming out. Whew! <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Woohoo! Happy about that. Alright, so now we're going to come down onto our mats, bring our heads down. And now take the rebound. Taking a rebound. Oh yeah. Feeling it. Okay. 
Okay, coming back up out of that, and we're going to address the hamstrings. And there's lots of uh, ways that we can do that, but one of the simplest that I like um, is just a, it's a, a, just a very simple um, pose where you just take your leg forward like this. Now, as I've said in other uh, um, classes that I've recorded for, you, for this channel and for you, it's all for you. <laughs> it's not the same doing it by Well, I am doing it by myself right now. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's kind of unusual. I got a bit, I'm kind of new to this stuff. All right, so what we're going to do here is uh, we're just going to allow, in fact, I'm very new to it. So forgive me for my inexperience. Uh, not new to te teaching, but new to YouTube. So we're just going to find the energy in the back of the leg. And then once we find that, I like to use a bolster as I said, you don't have to, you can come down onto the floor like this. Let the head drop down. Just letting the head sink down like this. And feeling that energy in the back of the leg. surrendering to the moment now. Allowing the sensations to build in the back of the leg. Really becoming accustomed to the sensations and how my body responds to this. Allowing, and I even picture the fascia of moving apart, stretching as I do this. And the fascia is a fascinating um, the topic. It's, it's, it's around every single muscle and fibre of our body, pretty much. The body, the 30%, let's call it my fascia, which is another word for muscle, because 30% of the muscle is made up of fascia. So we do spend a lot of time exercising the muscle and then forget about the fascia, which is 30% of the equation. So that's crazy. I mean, if you're into, if you're into um, running, for instance, as I mentioned before, we want the muscles to be functional, but we want the fascia to be functional as well. And so how do we, what is that? What does that mean? Well, the fascia, when it's, it's, when it's in good shape, it's, it's, it's not liquid, but it carries a lot of water in it. And uh, when it's not, it doesn't. And so it gets brittle and it, and it sticks. And when it's sticking, then you're going to get um, uh, friction between the muscle and the fascia, and the, and the muscle won't work anywhere near as well. It won't be able to slip and contract in, the, in, its, in its correct fat, in correct way. However, by stretching it and, and giving a long stretches, because it's collagen, so it takes a little bit longer to stretch, that's why we do the long holds. But also as well as that, it, it, it actually attracts, we're just going to come out of that posture now, it actually attracts water. So it becomes uh, hyperphobic. Anyway, it attracts water. So we're going to take the other side now, and that's what we want. And, and the studies now, the studies now are showing that, um, and there's so many done in fashion now. But before it was just a bit of white stuff that surrounded the muscle. Um, but uh, now they understand how how important it is. And and uh, they're also noticing that there could be a and could be a con um, communication channel. Does that ring bells of the meridian lines? <laughs> or the Nadis, perhaps? It's interesting how modern science needs verification and, uh, of ancient wisdoms 
Uh, but, you know, we're catching up. <laughs> we're catching up. Catching up with what they've been saying for 3,000 years. Yeah, now they're saying, oh, maybe there's some truth in that. And so they're definitely finding that then Thomas Myers, who wrote um, Anatomy of Trains, it's similar uh, uh, studies into the fascia. Uh, but his trains are different from uh, literary lines, but uh, similar in many ways. So we're just going to allow that energy to build here. Feeling the release happen, the letting go of everything. And really when, you know, you'll hear your teachers say, let go, let go, let go, a lot. And what we're really talking about is not... We're definitely talking about the physical, but we're also talking about the mental. What is it in your life that you're holding on to still? Was it that your dad said you would be no good at life? That you would never amount to anything? Was it that? Is it that? Still there in your mind? And if it is, you're, my dad's dead and he would say that to me. I love, don't get me wrong, I love my dad, but he's dead now. Uh, but they left me no scars. But he was doing his best, just like we do with our children. Just dropping deeply into it now. in the rebound. It's entirely up to you. Fabulous. And from here we're going to just turn over onto our backs. I'm going to work into the back, back body again, this time into the, into the uh, glutes. So um, I'm going to take my, my right leg, uh, sorry, my left leg up and bring my right leg across. So just at my ankle, so my ankle and my knee are more or less together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach through and pick up my shin, interlace the fingers right up to the webbing. And that way you'll find you won't really need to hold on them. They'll grip themselves. And then we just allowing ourselves and our head to come down and relaxing here. Now if you find that this is too much for you, this uh, posture, um, then you can just interlace them behind the, the uh, hamstrings like this. It's nowhere near as intense. Once again, tuck the, tuck the chin down. So that's going to help with stretching out. So we're not really targeting the area, but might as well get that as well. Stretch out the cervical section of the spine. And on the other uh, side, I'm going to show you a variation which is really good as well. I really like the variation. So you can do this like this. And some teachers may say, oh, well, yeah, there's a lot of yang in that, in that, with the way you're doing that, that, that pulling. But I'm not actually pulling. My, my fingers are interlaced. 
they're just, I guess they're holding on and they would be definitely hanging my fingers and so if you're a purist then perhaps you might say well this, but it is a yin, I don't make, I don't make the postures up, um, it is a yin pose um, but some people would say perhaps you know it's a little bit strong into the hands but pff, yeah. Anyway, I'll show you another variation of this that uh, takes every all of the um, all of the yang out of the posture. Well, you never can take all of it out, but there's uh, more than I've got there. Just relaxing into it. Allowing the back muscle to open up and just letting go. Bring the hands down, lie back, shavasana, take a rebound. Okay, so um, sometimes it's called a figure four um, or um, the flying butterfly, I think, no, that's figure four. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to uh, come up to a wall. So I've got a wall right behind me, as you can see. So we're just going to take our foot up on a wall, like this, and then then what we're going to do is we're going to take the other leg and bring it across like this and then just lie back. Now, I can adjust how much I'm getting into this simply by um, moving closer to the wall or further away from the wall. It's actually quite strong. I really like this variation. Hello! <laughs> Upside down now. I'm uh, not being rude, I'm just doing yin yoga. <laughs> okay. Uh, yoga's fun. You know, people are so serious about it all. Oh dear. When you talk to yogi too, no, they're kind of fun. So, just allowing the, the, uh, the, the um, muscles to open up as well as the fascia. scan which I would advise is take a body scan and I realized that my jaw was clamped and uh, I know this from myself um, and it's something that I'm working on it's my yoga just to let the jaw go let the tension of the jaw go You can shuffle right up to it if you want. And I'm happy here, but if you want to come all the way up there. Just move up closer to the wall. Take the legs up the wall and just If you're not, if, if you're not close to one, then perhaps just lie back in Shavasana or if you're you know, outside somewhere. Love this posture. 
This posture is a yield pose, it's just a beautiful yield posture. It just allows the blood to flush out of the legs and it pulls in the, in the uh, down the gut. It's really, really good for, for your heart as well because the heart doesn't have to pump the, the, the blood in and out of the legs, it just pulls it down here. It's a very relaxing for the heart. All right, just swinging that with that. And by the way, if there's any of these postures that you really like, you know, you can stay in them for up to 20 minutes. That's, that's what they reckon. Um, 20 minutes before there's a question of diminishing return. So if you want to stay in one longer, because you're getting it, then just pause the video and, and stay in one um, Entirely up to you. All right, so the last uh, posture that we're going to take uh, in this leg series is a side body stretch. Uh, it's called Banan Banasana. Um, but we're really looking to use getting to the ITB. So what I want you to do is I want you to walk the legs over to the right hand side as far as they will go. Just walking them over, keeping the pelvis down, keeping the shoulders down. Then you can walk your shoulders over, take your hands up over the, the body and hold on like this. Or if that's you know, not really working for you, you can keep your hands down by your side and just move the body over. Or you can move your leg over like this and that sometimes gives you more into the, the target area here, the functional functionality, the functional objective is to work into the side leg, the outer side of the, the, the leg, the fascia. The, um, the fascia that runs down the ITV, the earlier tibia band that runs down the side of the leg. Once again, can we get really tight in, in uh, um, runners and cyclists? So I'm not cycling too. Still do cycling. coming out of that side and then we're just going to take the other side so now we're going to move our legs over to the left hand side as far as they will go and if you like that with the leg over do that and then once you and oh by the way you don't have to have your legs together they don't need the feet together one can be out way further than the other and then the other can come to, to well not to join it but to hold it to you where you do the legs but this is quite good for the plantar fascia uh, sorry the, the ITB and then and then just move the shoulders around once again if you're good in the shoulders and you like this a lot of people really like this that gives you a really nice stretch down the side body down here as I say though that's not our functional objective today um, but you know if you like it that's fine no problem this is your practice, and so remember that when you do the stop. I'm just facilitating, just allowing, um, just giving some examples of, um, of what to do, giving you an invitation to come to posture, you don't have to if you don't want to, okay, you know, most. Give me a little bit more now, so I'm just going to move, shuffle, come back to stillness.
me. Now, if you're finding that it's you know compromising your lower back and shavasana, and so a lot of people do find it more comfortable with a bolster or a blanket with your knees down, just like bring your hands up in front of you, just tuck the chin in a little bit. Just allow yourself this opportunity to relax into this. Give yourself permission to relax into, into this Shavasana, Tango Shavasana. Feel the mind inside. Feel the changes in the world. So we start to wiggle on the toes, the fingers, get the bring some energy back into the body. You can lift the knees up and give yourself a little bit of uh, to and fro movement through the lumbar section if that feels good. And uh, then in your own time you want to come over into a fetal posture, um, that's fine. Once you've done that, then coming up into a, com a seated posture. It is referred to as a comfortable seated posture. Um, Sukhasana in, in, uh, in, in Sanskrit. Um, and we look, it's not an impulse, very much not. It's, a, it's the first of meditation postures. Um, and, but you'll notice that if you're like me, which you probably are because most people do the same thing and then they put their, their dominant foot forward. So in my case it's the right. So sometimes just be mindful of that and put your left leg in front instead. And that's just gonna help with a little bit of balance. And that's basically what it's all about. <laughs> balance and harmony in our lives. Mm, isn't that nice? Okay, so uh, we're gonna seal the practices we do with the three all mantra. I'd love you. If you wanna join in, don't feel silly. It's a beautiful thing by yourself or with a crowd, better with crowds, lovely with a crowd. Bring your hands into Namaskar. We're going to take a nice big deep breath in. the hands with the heart center. May we have love in our hearts. Bring the hands to the lips. May we have truth in the speech. Bring the hands to the forehead. May we have gratitude in the mind. Bring the hands down to the heart center and bow the head. Namaste. Namaste.